enabling a better tomorrow. And what the hell might that mean? The amount of time spent pondering this set of relationships is sort of lost in time. Trying to understand why it is when we understand what the right things are to do, we continue to act in a manner which creates unintended consequences or simply creates new problems that other people have to deal with so that the majority of today's problems are the direct result of yesterday's solutions. We're headed pretty much, apparently, in the wrong direction. Things get better for a period of time, and, and then they get worse, and, and then they get better, and then we, they get worse. And we seem to be stuck in this cycle. And, and the question I continue to ponder is, why is it that we go about doing that on an ongoing basis? So I've, after pondering this for an extended period of time, I've tried to take it apart and think about pieces and how an understanding of, better understanding of some of the pieces might better enable us to avoid what seems to be the consistent result of our actions, which is to make situations worse or create new problems that other people have to deal with later. So in attempting to do that, if I begin with a, a situation, some I, I call them situations because some people call them problems, and sometimes it's simply something that I want to create some manner of things are not as I would like them to be, or groups of people would like them to not be. So that there are very few situations where I am, in fact, the only stakeholder. There are typically multiple individuals and groups of individuals who are in a position to act upon or be acted upon by the situation being considered. And the intent is to, to think about what are the implications of that situation if we simply choose to do nothing. Then, and what would we really like the ideal alternative to be? We typically deal with problems in a, in a manner where we simply want them to go away as opposed to using them as an opportunity to figure out how tomorrow could actually be better than today once we've dealt with the situation. We also have to think about the assumptions that we make because we're all biased. We all have a set of beliefs under which we operate. And for most of us, we're, um, we don't take kindly to having those beliefs challenged. Yet, as many authors have claimed, many of the things that we believe are, are just plain wrong. So it's appropriate to actually evolved to a point where we're willing to, to look at our assumptions and challenge them to see if we can, in fact, develop a better understanding of the situation, the implications, and the ideal alternative that we would like to create. But between the situation and the ideal alternative, there's, there's a gap that we would like to resolve. And we also have to think about the assumptions of the stakeholders who are involved in the thinking about the gap and, and what we do about it. So we have to think about the, the trends that have evolved over time. I mean, we often deal with situations as though they are events that simply occurred because we weren't paying attention or we were paying attention to other things. And once it got our attention, it just looked like an event, but there are actually trends that have evolved over time for the situation to become what it is at the moment. So we look at the trends, we understand the related components that are responsible for those trends, structure, influences, behavior, far more than, than we typically think about. We look at the relevant relationships that are part of this complex set of interactions, um, which is why we use the situation as the basis for developing understanding because it helps us sort out which of all of the related components are really relevant to the situation that we're trying to deal with if we simply attempt to model systems, and I don't know what the hell that means. Um, typically, the undertaking rapidly gets completely out of control and produces something that as an end result nobody understands even the people that developed it 
So we have to figure out what the relevant relationships are and where the boundaries are in terms of what things we can address and what things we are not able to address with the current set of involved stakeholders. We then look for the leverage points. Where are the places where we can make changes, small changes that will have a dramatic impact on the set of relationships and actually end up with a strategy to model or alter the set of relationships so that it produces a new adoption model and this new set of behavior trends so that tomorrow is different from today because the structure of the interactions are different, which produces a new set of trends and a new future. So this is what Enabling a Better Tomorrow is all about, the book that I'm currently involved in writing, which is available presently for uh, advanced purchase and in the notes section of this video and wherever else it's posted. There's a link to a place where you can look at the tentative table of contents for this book and, and purchase it before it's actually finished and support the effort. I would be most appreciative if you would. Take care. Bye.